What's up, minimal fam? You asked for it, so here it is. Here is a complete list of every single beauty slash hygiene slash body product that I use in my life. Uh, spoiler alert, this is not going to be a long video because there are very few products that I actually use. I found with every aspect of minimalism, especially this one, the more I have decluttered out of my life, it has actually been a total positive and bonus and my body has responded really, really well to just using less in general. So it saves a bunch of time and money and the benefits have actually been really positive from subtracting. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna go by categories here and sort of just give a little brief explanation of everything I use. So category number one, dental hygiene. I use this Tom's natural toothpaste and Tom's dental floss. And of course my little OCD monster loves that they match in my medicine cabinet for only me and no one else to see, but it makes me happy. Um, noticeably absent, I do not use mouthwash because I think it's kind of unnatural to sort of over sanitize everything in your body. Your body comes with a natural microbiome that's designed to self-regulate. If you do have bad breath, that's typically a sign of not the best digestion or eating not so great foods. So that's maybe something to look at, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I do not use mouthwash. I just use those two products and Tom's is a great company. They're very eco-conscious and they don't test on animals, which is really important to me. So that is dental hygiene. Number two, hair. Some of you have seen my minimalist hair care routine video. If you want a little bit more in-depth explanation, you can check that out if you have not seen it. But I used to use shampoo, conditioner, hairspray, any sort of volumizing gel, mousse, whatever, to try and get volume. And I would curl the heck out of it and tease the heck out of it and do all these special things to it. I would dye it, I would do like, you know, use these little contraptions to sleep in it, to curl it, and it always just kind of sucked. I never really liked my hair. I was never happy with it. The texture was very poor and it was very flat and lifeless. And when I washed it with shampoo and conditioner, even the supernatural, like sulfite free, whatever stuff, gobs of it would still fall out in the shower, which never really seemed right to me. Um, and then I, a couple years ago, discovered the, the no poo method through YouTube videos. And I tried the baking soda, the apple cider vinegar, that stuff was weird. My hair did not like it, but I just toughed it out and did three months, this was during COVID actually, of no shampoo and conditioner at all. And yes, my hair was an absolute greasy, disgusting mess, but then it turned a corner. What happens is when you're washing your hair every day and using these harsh shampoos and conditioners, it strips your hair of its natural oils. So then your hair actually produces more oil or your scalp produces more oil to try to compensate for that. And that's why if you don't wash your hair in a couple days, it'll get super oily. But when you remove those unnatural substances, every, your, your hair, your scalp is also a little like micro ecosystem too. When you remove those things that are drying out your hair, the oil production will even out. And now I just wash my hair once a week and it is far better. And the product I use for that is this Fiji face and body soap. It's not advertised as a hair shampoo bar, but I found it works incredible for it. And I now don't use conditioner at all. I just use this, just wash, lather your hair, get it wet, and then take the bar directly to your scalp and it makes a really great lather. It washes your hair great, it comes out super clean, but it doesn't dry it out like other shampoo bar soaps I've had. The coconut oil leaves it super moisturized. And then it have like a natural wave and body that, yeah, I don't have the most amazing hair in the world, but I'm happy with it. And it looks far better than it ever did on regular shampoo and conditioner. And now I do not use any hairspray or salt spray or anything to volumize it or literally nothing else touches my hair except for that bar soap and water and hair brush. So that is hair care. Moving on to skin care, uh, same thing. I used to think that, and we're, especially women, but everyone, we're kind of marketed this lie of you need to spend thousands of dollars on really expensive, fancy, nice things and the latest microdermabrasion, whatever, to have nice skin. And women can spend so much money on all of these products and still not have nice skin. The uh, it was such an interesting thing. I When I stopped using all of those products, I found my skin actually became really great and I'm very happy with it. And it's in combination with diet, of course, um, but when you 
take all of those things off of your skin. Again, I think your skin, it's also a little microbiome. It's designed to self-regulate. We're designed to have healthy skin. And the more you come back into alignment with nature, or at least that's how it worked for me, my skin has been much happier. So now all I do is when I wash it in the morning, it's literally just with water. And then at the end of the day, when I've had a hard day at work and you know just normal life stuff, I will use this same coconut oil stuff I use on my hair for my face and my whole body. And I love that it's just one product in my shower that I have to use. And again, it gets it super clean. Coconut oil is a nat natural, healthy antimicrobial. So if there is yucky bacteria you wanna get off, coconut oil is the right thing for that job that's natural. And, but it leaves your skin super soft and it's great for the environment too. It's biodegradable. So you're not putting a bunch of chemicals into the water system, which is great too. And then, at night, I don't put any creams or potions or lotions or serums or tonics or whatever the heck else is out there on my face. I leave it completely dry so that it can just breathe overnight because your, your pores and your skin want to breathe. That's how you keep the bacteria out. That's how you keep clear skin. In the morning, I do use some lotion. I just use this Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Body Lotion. I have used the same thing probably 20 plus years maybe. I either started using it the tail end of high school or beginning of college, I can't remember, but regardless, that was a long, long, long time ago. So sometime in the late 90s, early 2000s, I have been started using this product and I do not fall prey to the new marketing, latest and greatest, oh, try this or try this one or this new thing came out, I could care less. I found something that works for me, so I use it and I have no inclination to try something new and spend money experimenting when I have something that works and my skin responds well to and it's a fairly natural product and it's very affordable. It's like $8 for that tube, which lasts me maybe a couple months, I'm not sure. In the wintertime when it's drier, I do my whole face and then in the summertime when it's hot and more humid, I just sort of dab it on my eyes and a little bit on my lips, you know, key areas that tend to get a little drier sometimes. Um, and then my body, I really only do a lotion treatment about once a week when I shave. I used to, you know, lotion up every single day and think that's what you have to do. But I've found that it just honestly isn't that necessary for me. My skin doesn't feel super dry. Um, it just, yeah, I basically do it as needed for that. So. And then a lot of, I've been getting a lot of comments, very concerned people like, why don't you wear sunscreen? Well. I think that I'm not, I mean, this is going to trigger people, but I'm not a huge believer in sunscreen. That doesn't mean that I don't believe you can't get burnt and sin damage in the sun. I just think moderation is key. A little bit of healthy sunlight is actually very good for you. It's vitamin D. And if I'm going to be in the sun for a long period of time, like say a hike, I'll just cover up because that's a better option than sunscreen anyway. I will wear a kind of light, thin, long sleeve shirt if I'm hiking so that I'm protected the whole day versus worrying about reapplying sunscreen. And then I'll wear, I have a hat that's like rimmed. So my neck, my ears, all of my face is completely covered and that's better protection anyway. If I am out say at the beach or swimming in the ocean where I'm not wearing a hat and I'm covered, then I will wear some sunscreen. I have this it's actually a local brand here to Encinitas Sun Bum. Um, it's a fairly natural ingredients on that and it's 50. It's got a little bit of that zinc oxide, so it's full coverage. And I'll put that on my face in key areas that do need the protection if I'm not covered up. But that's, that's, that's sort of just, again, special circumstances if I'm swimming out in the water. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't wear sunscreen on my face because it clogs your pores and there's a lot of weird ingredients in it. And I would rather just get a healthy amount of sunshine and then cover up when I'm out for longer periods of time. Also for my skin, I really do not get blemishes anymore. And this has been for a key reason of a couple things. One, taking out all the products, the, the things I thought were keeping my skin clear were actually irritating it and especially like abrasive scrubs and toners and serums. It was too harsh and those were making my skin break out more. Number two, diet. When I took dairy out of my regime, when I went fully plant-based vegan, I noticed immediately my skin cleared up. I never had horrible like cystic acne or anything, but I did always have spots everywhere and sometimes really deep and painful ones. And 
within a month of taking dairy out of my diet, I all of those breakouts completely went away. And I would really only get breakouts when I would go drinking back in the day when I was living in Vegas and Hollywood. And that's, you know, alcohol is a toxin. So when you drink, your body is like, I don't want this in me. So it will push it out of your skin. And I would absolutely get a, a decent amount of breakout after drinking alcohol. But now since I don't drink anymore, I really never hardly ever go get any blemishes. And that's, you know, you could call it luck, but I definitely think it's paying attention to what is going into your body and what you're putting on your body. And the next main factor that I think is huge on this also is I stopped wearing foundation. Foundation is the biggest slippery slope to bad skin because women are sold like, oh, you'll be more beautiful if you put this face paint on and you contour and then cover up imperfection. But then what does that do? That causes more imperfection because your skin gets completely clogged and you will get breakouts because the ingredients on that stuff, even the like expensive Estee Lauder or Chanel, like there is some really gross, crappy, environmentally unfriendly things in those products. And then you're just slathering on your skin and completely caking it up and it can't breathe and it will cause more breakouts. So then you'll want to pour more of it on because no one likes to have a breakout. It doesn't feel so hot. So it's just this vicious, vicious cycle. So when I removed foundation from my daily regime, I never put that stuff on my face anymore. I found that I can go months and months and months without ever seeing a zit, and I'm thankful for that. If I ever do get one, it's because I ate some crappy like french fries or something because, you know, we all got to live a little bit, and I'm certainly not perfect. I like to indulge occasionally, very rarely here and there, but if I do get a little blemish, I use this. Clear Conception, con, well, Conception, <laughs> Complexion Concealer, and it has the salicylic acid, so it covers the spot and just sort of helps medicate it to remedy, but honestly, the amount of times I have to use that in a year is pretty limited. I've had this same tube for, mm, I think I bought this during COVID, so three and a half, four years now, and there's no sign of it being empty, so I really don't have to use it that much. Okay, next, going on to makeup. I just mentioned I stopped wearing foundation, and I really don't wear any makeup. This is, makeup's a total personal choice. I have no hate to people that I want to express themselves creatively, or it makes them feel beautiful, or you just enjoy wearing it, whatever, like, you do you. This is not a hate on anyone wearing makeup. This was just my personal journey of I used to never leave the house without a full face of makeup. But as I started, it all kind of wove together when I started my minimalism journey, when I started personal healing, when I started eating a fully vegan diet and decluttering unhealthy habits like drinking out of my life is my consciousness sort of shifted to where I really just want to accept myself as I am. Do I think I'm this like runway model, whatever, like, no, absolutely not. But I, it's not about that. I, I don't want to live up to someone else's standards. I want to just feel good on the inside and accept myself for who I am. And I just don't like the feeling of stuff on my face. I don't like spending money to put stuff on my face and I don't like taking the time to do it. And more, I really just, as I was on this sort of journey to self-love, I had to overcome the mentality of, I'm not beautiful enough as I am and I need to put all this stuff on me to be accepted and loved and worthy and I really knew that that was a toxic mental pattern and I'm not saying that's how everyone who wears makeup thinks. Um, there are people wear makeup for lots of different reasons and it can be very healthy. Again, this is just my personal experience of I, I needed to come to a place where I just love and accept myself for who I am. So the desire for makeup kind of fell away and an interesting thing happened where I remember in my 20s, I almost couldn't even look in the mirror at myself without makeup because I thought I was just so, you know, wretchedly unattractive, as horrible as that sounds, but I was very insecure back then. And I would then, like, I, you know, took pride in my craft of being able to apply makeup well. And I was a performing artist and got to do some fun artistic things. But when I would say, be going out on a date, I would do all this stuff to my face, like, okay, maybe now I'm attractive looking and I would feel better having all of this stuff on. And now it's been, it's quite the opposite effect. If I, I've played around with um, putting it back on a few times and I found that I just don't feel like myself and I feel like it's covering up the true essence of who I am. And 
I don't prefer how I look with it. I think I look better without it. And that's just my personal opinion. And if someone looks at me and is like, oh gosh, wow, that chick should put some makeup on. Like, okay, cool. You're allowed to have that opinion, but that's probably just not someone I should have in my life. And so I don't. Every once in a while, I will wear one thing if I wanna feel a little extra or dressed up or I'm going to a wedding or going to a dinner date or whatever. Uh, the one makeup item I do wear is this Lash Princess. <laughs> it's kind of a silly name, mascara. I found it at Target. It's like $7 a tube. It's again, another cruelty-free product, which is important to me and it works really great. I don't subscribe to the belief that you have to spend hundreds, thousands of dollars on these fancy, expensive makeup products. Most of them are filled with garbage for the environment. A lot of them test on animals, which regardless of how you eat, I don't think anyone could stand up and say, yeah, it's cool to test on animals for makeup. Like that's archaic and barbaric and we need to stop doing that. Um, but it's a great little product and that is what I will use if I want to just feel a little dressed up. But other than that, no makeup. And the one thing I will wear, I wouldn't call this makeup, is chapstick. That's on a daily basis. I wouldn't call that a makeup category. Maybe we're back to the skin, but same thing. The Burt's Bees chapstick, I've used it for probably 20, 25 years. I don't know. I'm not interested in trying the new latest and greatest whatever. That's with everything across the board in my life. Life, if I find something that works and I like it, I will use it. It's reasonably priced, it's an eco conscious product, and it works for me. So I'm not going to stray from that or waste time, money, and effort trying new things just for the sake of trying new things because marketing poked at me. That really just doesn't have any kind of power over me anymore. Moving on to the last product, this one is for the ladies only feminine care. I use a Diva cup. And I have used a Diva Cup since 2018, and this is an incredible game changer. I There's lots of other brands out there. I know we're all built differently and shaped differently and have different needs. So there's ones that are you can try out. Um, I happen to get lucky. The Diva Cup worked for me the first one I tried, and it is amazing. I can say without getting too detailed that I would say the product works better than traditional feminine care products as far as doing what you want it to do and it's completely comfortable and the coolest part is I have not spent money on feminine care products since 2018 fall of 2018 is when I found the Steva cup and this is actually the same cup and before you go ew gross that's so old they are designed to last a lifetime the material is 100% antimicrobial so nothing weird or gross can grow on it there's no Odor to, odor to it or dysfunction to it. It's designed to last for life. It's personal comfort. If you want to get a new one more often, that is totally up to you, but they are designed to last for life. So not only have I not spent money since 2018 on my monthly cycle, I have not contributed to anything going in the landfill since then, which is super important too. Um, the Not that anyone should ever feel guilty for using feminine care products. It's part of being a woman. But if there's something that comes along and you can try it and work it that contributes to way less waste going into the environment, I am all about that. And it's super convenient. They do sell little soaps that you can use if that feels right for you, but they're actually even designed to not need that. Again, it's 100% antimicrobial, so you nothing gross or icky can grow on it, essentially. Um, you just boil it at the beginning and at the end of your cycle and that's all you need. So it's really awesome for travel. You don't have to worry about taking a bunch of stuff with you, just have that. And especially if you're like backpacking or camping or you know somewhere where you maybe don't have access to stores, it's been a total game changer and I cannot recommend that product enough. So that is it. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine products total. There is nothing else not shown here. The only thing that would be useful on my body, I guess, that I didn't show is a toothbrush and a hairbrush. I guess, I don't know if you consider those products, but those are, I mean, I'm talking about like consumable things here. I don't know, call it what you will, but it's essentially nine products total for everything. There's nothing I didn't film here and it covers all the bases I need. I invite you to lean into seeing what you might be able to declutter and you know experiment. Everyone's got, we're, we've all have different needs, but I can speak from experience after spending hundreds of dollars, probably even close to thousands of dollars on stuff for 
between makeup and hair stuff and body stuff, thinking I need a different type of lotion for every different thing per year to now I spend uh, per year, gosh, maybe definitely not more than 50 because so many of these products last a long time. Um, but probably, yeah, maybe around $50 a year per total for everything. Um, and for me, that is definitely how I want to live. It works for me. And I, I hope you can maybe get some inspiration here today on seeing what you might be able to declutter and let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.